Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> who teaches English at Madison High School is as sociable as the next teacher, especially if the next teacher happens to be Mr. Philip Boynton. But unfortunately, Mr. Boynton, who teaches biology at Madison, is a, a rather shy individual. Yes, indeed. For a fellow who spends so much time studying life, he certainly manages to get very little on him. <laughs> of course, there are rumors around the school that I'm that way about Mr. Boynton. Now, I don't know exactly what that way means, but if feeling that way means feeling this way, then I guess I'm that way about Mr. Boynton. <laughs> anyway, last week, he accepted my invitation to invite me to the faculty dance Saturday night. And so bright and early Saturday morning, I asked one of my pupils, Walter Denton, to drive me down to the beauty parlor in his jalopy. Unlike the new Hudson, Walter's car isn't one you step down into. His car, most people back away from. <laughs> it's a very streamlined little job. No windows, no top, and no windshield. All in all, it's the coldest hot rod in town. <laughs> if it's too cool for you, Miss Brooks, I can put up the top. The top? Where is that? In the back on the floor. <laughs> no, thanks, Walter. It doesn't matter how my hair looks now. Antoine will change me into something believable. I appreciate your giving me this lift today, Walter. Oh, it's a pleasure, Miss Brooks. A pleasure and a privilege, because I'm so fond of you both as a person and a teacher. You know, that's one thing about Madison High. We sure got some wonderful teachers. Now, take Mr. Boynton. Granted. He sure is tops. I ran into him the other night at the movies. Incidentally, he was with another member of the faculty, Miss Enright. Please, Walter, not so soon after breakfast. <laughs> oh, I forgot. You and Miss Enright aren't exactly stuck on each other. That, Walter, is an understatement. Now, let's, let's just forget about her, shall we? Sure, I'll be happy to forget about her. I never think about her much anyway. Fine. Walter. Yeah? Well, she's sitting close to Mr. Boynton. <laughs> Who? The lady we decided to forget about. Well, I can practically give you a blow-by-blow blow because I sat right behind him in the movie. And what's your report, G2? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing? They were so dull, I spent half my time watching the picture. <laughs> you should have asked for your money back. Of course, she did whisper a couple of things into his ear, but I couldn't hear what they were very well. She has a funny way of purring when she talks. There's nothing funny about it. To her, purring comes naturally. <laughs> of course, she tried to hold Mr. Boynton's hand once or twice, but she didn't quite make it. Why not? Most of the time, he had it in a bag of popcorn. <laughs> well, it would serve her right if she got salt all over her manicure. Here's the beauty parlor, Walter. Uh, would it be convenient for you to pick me up in a couple of little hours? Oh, sure, sure. I gotta get a haircut anyhow, and I usually go to Barney's Barbershop right down the street. I was thinking of getting a butch haircut this time. Well, from what I've seen of the kids who get their hair cut at Barney's, he can butch up any kind of a haircut. <laughs> Antoine? Well, if it isn't Miss Brooks. A long time no see, like the man says. What man? Oh, there you go. You're not in my shop two minutes and you're pulling my leg. But I don't care. I'm delighted to see you at any time. You're such a challenge to a beautician. <laughs> a challenge? Yes, you see, you come into my shop so infrequently, I have to start from scratch each time. <laughs> of course, you do have a load of natural beauty. Thanks, loads. <laughs> but then so does a rosebush And even it, with all its natural loveliness Must be properly and frequently cared for In order to retain that beauty Its soil must be irrigated Its roots watered Its leafy branches gently sprinkled Well, don't stand there Turn the hose on me <laughs> uh, Before I assign you to a booth uh, Tell me, Miss Brooks What prompted you to come in this morning? Oh, it's very simple, Antoine There's a faculty dance at Madison High tonight And... I thought it would be nice to look like a human being. All the big jobs they bring to Antoine. <laughs> well, no matter. It's a feeble artist, indeed, who cannot rise above his subject. 
I shall make you my masterpiece. All I ask in return is that you promise to visit Antoine's once a week. Aren't you forgetting something? I'm a school teacher. You know, it isn't an accident that we of the faculty have a faculty for always looking like the faculty. <laughs> Beauty parlors are a luxury we can rarely afford. Well, apparently that doesn't apply to all teachers. One of my best customers is a teacher. In fact, she has an appointment here in a few minutes. Uh, uh, Miss Enright, uh, do you know her? Yes, we both teach English at Madison. Oh, then you and Miss Enright have something in common. I suppose you could call him that, yes. <laughs> oh, she's a wonderful person. Very active in the Parent Teachers Association and in all sorts of civic functions. Uh, what do you think of her? She's fine, good teacher. Uh, confidentially, I don't like her either. <laughs> And even though I should be grateful for the new customers I get through her connections, I can't help feeling that she's very overbearing. That's my honest opinion, and when it comes to people, I believe that honesty is the best policy. Well, here I am, Antoine. Miss Enright, how wonderful to see you. <laughs> Your policy just lapsed. <laughs> Why, Miss Brooks, what are you doing in a beauty parlor? Oh, I just thought I'd let Antoine do a little lily gilding. I haven't started yet. I'm going to make Miss Brooks look like a thing of beauty. Is there time? <laughs> this is Saturday, you know. We have to be back at school by Monday. Oh, I'll make it. Antoine's going to put more men on the job. <laughs> well, uh, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'll arrange booth three for you, Miss Emma. Oh, do that, Antoine. Uh, Miss Brooks, now that we're alone, there's something I think you should know. That you were at the movies with Mr. Boynton last night? Well, how did you... Were you there, too? No, just my emissary. <laughs> I must admit, Miss Brooks, I thought you'd be a little more upset about it. Upset? Me? Because Mr. Boynton chooses to go out with another English teacher? Of course I'm not upset. In fact, I had quite a laugh over it. A laugh? I thought I'd split my infinitive. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I happen to know that Mr. Boynton once heard the expression, let's live a little. Yes. So that's what he does. He lives as little as possible. <laughs> no, I'm not worried about what Mr. Boynton does when he's not with me. Look, Miss Brooks, I like to do things in an open and above board manner. I'm going to lay my cards on the table. Good. Take them out of your sleeve and deal. <laughs> What's the first card? Just this. I know you've booked Mr. Boynton for the faculty dance tonight, but remember, there's always tomorrow, and I don't give up easily. Well, good for you, Salty Nails. <laughs> don't underestimate me, my dear. The next time Mr. Boynton and I walk down a middle aisle, it may not be in a theater. Be sure to invite me to the wedding. And Miss Enright, if you ever become a mother, remember, I'd love one of the kittens. <laughs> Now, Miss Enright. Yes, coming, Antoine. I'll see you and Mr. Boynton at the dance, Miss Brooks. I'll be looking forward to it with considerable revulsion. <laughs> oh, oh, booth three. Here it is. Uh, sit right down here, Miss Enright. Antoine, before you do anything for me, I want you to take care of Miss Brooks. Uh, but your appointment... I'll was... wait. There's a certain way I want you to take care of Miss Brooks. First of all, I want you to comb her hair up in back and give her bangs in front. But that wouldn't suit her face at all. Exactly. Then I want you to be sure and see that she's got pounds of makeup on, plenty of rouge, eyeshadow, everything. But she won't like that. Neither will Mr. Boynton. I know the type. And whatever you do, don't let Miss Brooks look into a mirror. Tell her, uh, tell her to wait for her first reaction from a member of the opposite sex. But, Miss Enright, suppose she doesn't want me to... She'll agree to anything you suggest. She knows you're an expert beautician. Well, then how can I betray her faith in me? I'd feel like a traitor, a despicable traitor. Antoine, dozens of women patronize this shop at my suggestion, and at my suggestion they go elsewhere. Now, are you going to give Miss Brooks the works or not? Well, Benedict Arnold made a nice living for years. <laughs> We are all finished. Remember now, no mirrors, Miss Brooks. All right, Antoine, if you say so. I'll leave it up to the public. Oh, there's Walter, parked as usual, right in front of a fire plug. 
Well, here I am. Let's go. Uh, sorry, lady. I'm waiting for Miss Brooks. Take another look, Walter. It's me. Holy cow! Get in quick. I'll take you to the receiving hospital. <laughs> or better yet, I'll give you first aid. I'm the Red Cross chairman of our class, you know. Well, why do I need first aid? Your mouth. It's all cut. Oh, you're just not used to seeing me with lipstick on. Start the car, Walter. I didn't intend to take so long. Mrs. Davis will be wondering what happened to me. When she sees you, she'll still be wondering. <laughs> Gosh, that hair comb. Those bangs. What's wrong with these bangs? Are they too long? Well, in all the time you've known me, Miss Brooks, have I ever consciously been fresh or tried to hurt your feelings? No, Walter, never. And I can answer your question honestly. They're not long enough. They're frustrating, Miss Brooks. <laughs> what are you talking about, Walter? Well, they start out all right, but just when they really get going, boom, they stop. <laughs> right at the tip of your nose. <laughs> oh, that's just a few hairs that were blown out of place in this hopped-up pie plate of yours. How do I look otherwise? Well, frankly, Miss Brooks, I thought you were more beautiful without all that stuff. I mean... Well, gosh, with your natural beauty, you could have been a famous stage actress or even a model or a big movie star. I've often wondered, what made you become a school teacher anyway? I couldn't resist the money. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Regardless of age, skin type, or previous beauty care, doctors prove you, too, may win a lovelier complexion with palm olive soap. But to win this lovelier complexion, you must stop improper cleansing. Instead, use palm olive the way doctors advise. Thirty-six doctors, leading skin specialists, advised using palm olive soap this way for 1,285 women with all types of skin. Young, old, dry, oily, normal... And using palm olive soap alone, two out of three won lovelier complexions. Oily skin looked less oily. Dull, drab skin wonderfully brighter. Coarse-looking skin appeared finer. Here's what the doctors advise. Wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day. Massage with palm olive's wonderful beauty lather for 60 seconds each time to get palm olive's full beautifying effect. Then rinse. Look for improvement within 14 days, for doctors prove this way using palm olive alone really works. So get palm olive soap and start today to win a lovelier complexion. And ladies, enter the $100,000 49 Gold Rush Contest. The makers of palm olive soap offer $49,000 first prize and over 4,900 other prizes. Get entry blanks and complete rules from your dealer now. You may win a fortune in cash. Walter took me home from Antoine, and as my new bangs and I entered the front door, my landlady, Mrs. Davis, came out of the living room. Hello, Mrs. Davis. Oh, how do you do, madam? If you're looking for Miss Brooks, she isn't in. I'm her landlady. <laughs> well, maybe I can refresh your memory. Good morning, Mrs. Davis. I can't pay the rent till next week. Connie Brooks, where in the world did you get that makeup? Antoine's beauty parlor. You didn't leave much there, did you? <laughs> Although I suppose it is attractive to a male. By the way, has he called? Mr. Boynton, you mean? Not this morning, Connie. And I know why you didn't get any calls last night, either. Why? I discovered our phone wasn't working. But I fixed it about an hour ago. You fixed it? Yes, I went downtown and paid the bill. <laughs> you know, Connie, as one gets used to your new look, it's not half bad. Well, I should hope not. After spending three hours in a hot booth, the least I can expect... I'll get it. Hello? Oh, well, hello, Miss Brooks. This is Mr. Boynton. I thought I'd better call to ask what time I can pick you up tonight. I wouldn't want to barge in without giving you ample time to get ready. Oh, you can come over any time, Mr. Boynton. It never takes me more than a few minutes to fix up. Well, then I'll be over about seven. Uh, you know, I tried to reach you several times last night, but your phone was out of order. Yes, I just heard about it. I was quite disappointed when you didn't answer, but while I was combing some new white mice I've acquired, Miss Enright dropped by and asked me if I wanted to go to the movies. What did you do with the other mice? I mean... <laughs> Where did you go after the movie? Ice cream parlor? Oh, no, I was full. The popcorn's very good at the Paramount. Yes, I know. Don't they have a slogan that goes, if it's Paramount Picture, it's the best popcorn in town? 
I, I don't know about that, Miss Brooks, but this wasn't a Paramount picture. It was an independent, and not a very good one. In fact, as I once heard Jack Benny say, they should have kept the picture and released the producer. <laughs> That's a hot one. <laughs> what was the picture about, Mr. Boynton? It was about some girl with a lot of money who wants her sweetheart to quit being a poor songwriter and work in her father's doorknob factory. <laughs> Does he? No, but he writes a big hit song after they separate. And when he's got as much money as her father, he asks her to marry him again. And this time she says yes. I can't understand it. Me either. You ought to see the girl this fellow proposes to. She's got two inches of makeup on and she wears b- bangs. Bangs? <laughs> the most ridiculous looking getup you ever saw. How any man in his right mind could fall for anybody like that? Well, well I won't keep you any longer, Miss Brooks. I'll pick you up at seven. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I wish I hadn't let Walter go home. He could have taken me back to Antoine. I'll get it, Tony. Well, Osgood Conklin, how is Madison's handsome principal today? Uh, fine, Margaret, fine. As you know, my wife's preparing all the refreshments for the dance tonight, and she wondered if you'd be kind enough to help her out with a few sandwiches. Why, of course, Osgood. Shall I make the same kind of sandwiches I did last time? White fish and peanut butter? <laughs> No, no, thank you. I've brought some Hello, things. Mr. Conklin. Miss Brooks has been to the hairdresser's Osgood. Doesn't she look interesting? Well, uh, I really don't know. It's hard to tell. I, I can see you all right, Miss Brooks, but how in the world can you see me? <laughs> oh, it's easy, Mr. Conklin. I just blow a little, <laughs> and there you are. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've got to get back to the beauty parlor right away. Do you think you could give me a lift? I suppose so, Miss Brooks. And, Mrs. Davis, you'll find the ingredients for the sandwiches in this package right here. All right, Osgood. I'll get started right away. See you later, Connie. Goodbye, Mrs. Davis. Well, come along, Miss Brooks. I'll drop you off. White fish and peanut butter? <laughs> As I recall, Mr. Conklin, the beauty parlor's only a couple of blocks past your house, so I won't be taking you too far out of your way. Oh, that's perfectly all right, Miss Brooks. I hope you'll forgive me for seeming so taken aback when you first came in, but, well, you did look quite unlike a school teacher. Is that bad? On Saturdays, no. In fact, I, uh, I rather admire a woman who takes the time to enhance her charms. Confidentially, I've been trying to stampede Mrs. Conklin into a beauty salon for years, but she just can't see it. Doesn't believe in powder, rouge, lipstick, none of the refinements. What does she want with refinements? She's got you. That is, she's, uh, got you. <laughs> Excuse me, we're just passing my house. I always honk the horn when I'm in the neighborhood. It gives my wife and daughter a feeling of security. <laughs> but as you just said, Miss Brooks, she's got me. That's the trouble. She doesn't have to patronize beauty shops to hold on to me, and she knows it. Of course, if she had some reason to be jealous of me, she... Jealous. Miss Brooks, do you think that if Martha were jealous... Oh, pardon me, Mr. I... Conklin, but if you'll just pull up here, this is Antoine. Where? It's that little building with the dimple in the door. <laughs> Thanks for the lift, Mr. Conklin. You're welcome, Miss Brooks. And we can pursue the topic of my wife's peccadilloes at the dance tonight. Oh, definitely. I'm one of the best peccadillo dancers in town. <laughs> Well, that does it, Miss Brooks. Am I completely plain again, Antoine? If you were any plainer, you'd fade right into the woodwork. <laughs> you -hoo. I'm home, Mrs. Davis. She should be back any... Oh, wait a minute. She just came in. Come to the phone, Connie. It's Mr. Boynton. Again? I wonder what he wants now. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Mrs. Davis told me you were at the beauty shop. I was delighted to hear that. Delighted, Mr. Boynton? Yes. You see, I was afraid you might misconstrue my remarks about the girl in the movie and think that I dislike all spectacular hairdressings. Actually, the new styles fascinate me. They do? Yes. <laughs> uh, what sort of hairdo did you get, Miss Brooks? Well, what I got was more of a hair don't. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure you'll like what I'm going to get again, Mr. Boynton. Oh, fine. When we walk into that dance tonight, I want those other teachers to really notice you. I've even bought a brand new blue serge suit. Do you think it'll fit me? <laughs> That's a hot one. <laughs> I'll 
see you at seven. Goodbye, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, Mr. Boynton. Well, back to the beauty parlor. You know something, Mrs. Davis? What, Connie? In moments like these, I almost wish I was Mrs. Conklin. What am I saying? <laughs> I'll have to be going down to the gym now, Martha. I want to see if it's fixed up properly for the dance tonight. Very well, dear. Oh, don't forget the keys to your car. They're on the table in the hall. And Osgood, I must say the car took a lovely polish. I got a glance at it when you were driving past the house with some woman. Yes. Well, I was just... You saw me driving with some woman, Martha? Yes, dear, I did. Well, there's no need to be jealous, of course, but she was quite pretty, don't you think? Well, I'm sorry, Osgood. I didn't get a very good look at her. I was carrying some cold cuts at the time. Mm. <laughs> if you must know, she was gorgeous. The cold cuts were quite popular last year. Don't evade the issue, Martha. Who was that woman you saw me with this morning? <laughs> oh, I know that. That's a hot one. I repeat, who was that woman, Martha? What woman? Oh, in the car with you. Well, really, Osgood, you drive so many women from the Board of Education around. This one I... wasn't from the Board of Education. Ah, promise. Oh, please, dear. You're leaning against the potato salad. <laughs> Why don't you admit it, Martha? You're jealous. Five loaves of white. That should be enough. Martha, I said you were jealous. Yes, dear. Now, where did I put the rye bread? Martha, you're not even listening to me. Hello, Dad. Hello! Oh, <laughs> sorry. I mean, hello, Harry. Harriet, you've been crying. Is something wrong, dear? Oh, everything's wrong. Walter Denton told me he had to pick up Miss Brooks. But when I saw him, he was riding around with some, some creature and bang. I'm going up to my room now, Mother. And if Walter calls, just tell him I've taken a slow boat to China. Oh, no. <laughs> but after you've brooded a while, please come down and help me, me find the rye bread. Oh, Mother! Now there's a girl who will make some man a fine wife, insanely jealous. Oh, but here's the rye bread. I do hope I win the door prize this year. Don't think I'm past noticing pulchritude, Martha. I'm still just a boy at heart. You know why I gave that other woman a lift in my car? Because she'd just come from the beauty shop. You hear me, Martha? I was bedazzled. If it hadn't been for all the powder in that store-bought hair... That man of mine wouldn't have gone nowhere, nowhere. Oh, what's the use? <laughs> Hello again, Miss Brooks. Uh, Tilly, prepare booth number four. <laughs> and now then, Miss Brooks, you said on the phone you wanted something fascinating, so I've decided to give you the famous Antoine Marcel. Is it really exciting, Antoine? Exciting? This is the very same coiffure I copied hair by hair from Gorgeous George. <laughs> Fine. Just give it to me, and then I'll wrestle you for the bill. <laughs> Well, this ought to be a very successful dance, Miss Brooks. Quite a few people in the gym. Yes, indeed, Mr. Boynton. And at the sound of the next voice, there will be one people too many. Oh, there you are. Good evening, Mr. Boynton. Oh, good evening, Miss Enright. The next number is a waltz, Mr. Boynton. Oh, is it? <laughs> yes, and I'm just dying to waltz. Well, you do that. Mr. Boynton and I will be right behind you. <laughs> well, look who just came in. It's Mrs. Conklin, isn't it? but in a backless evening gown and an upswept hairdo. And I thought I was overdone. Alongside of Mrs. Conklin, I look like Carrie Nation after a bad night. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Well, good evening, Mrs. Conklin. Hello, Mrs. Conklin. Don't let me scare you. I got myself up like this to teach Osgood a lesson. I wonder what he'll say when he sees me. Well, you won't have to wait long to find out. He's coming over now. Uh, hello, folks. I... Oh, I see. We have a newcomer in our midst. And a... <laughs> a very charming one at that. Osgood Conklin at your service, Miss... Uh, Miss... It's Mrs. Mrs. Conklin. Well, I'm delighted to make your... <laughs> Mrs. Conklin. Hello, Osgood. Ma! What in the world? Your hair, your... Well, if that is... Your face is... Of all the... You look lovely, my dear. <laughs> I'm going to have every dance with you tonight. 
Oh, Boynton. Oh, yes, Mr. Conklin? I'd like you to take over my duties as host at the front door, if you please. Oh, but, sir, Miss Brooks and I were... To the door, to... Boynton. The... Yes, sir. Come along, Martha. If it hadn't been for powder and that store-bought hair, I would have... Oh, Miss Enright. Yes, Miss Brooks? Shall we dance? <laughs> Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster cream... Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mr. Boynton got away from the door just in time to ask me for the last half of the last dance. You look lovely tonight, Miss Brooks. I, I feel I put you to a lot of trouble today. Oh, it was nothing. Of course, I did lose about five pounds, but it was mostly around the scalp. Attention, attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the faculty, it is my pleasure at this time to announce the winner of the door prize. She is none other than our Miss Brooks. Congratulations, Miss Brooks. Thank you, Mr. Conklin. Uh, I know you're all anxious to find out what the door prize is. Well, I have here a ticket, Miss Brooks, entitling you to one free treatment at Antoine's beauty parlor. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, would you tell me one thing? What's that, Miss Brooks? Is this for putting on or taking off? <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Connolly Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Mary Jane Croft, Frank Nelson, and Margaret McDonald. <laughs> Men, here is actual factual proof of more comfortable, actually smoother shaves by using Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. 1,251 men tried the Palm Olive Lather way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they shaved before, three out of four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves the Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream way. <laughs> For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This week marks the 37th anniversary of the Girl Scouts, and the Colgate Palm Olive Pete Company takes this opportunity to wish a very happy birthday to all Girl Scouts of America, whose fine program trains the girls of today to be better citizens in the world of tomorrow. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.